Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at hosting your own social media website in Docker. And what we're gonna take a look at today is called HumHub. Now, the one thing I wanna say uh, just right up front, this only works on x86 processors. So this won't work on a Raspberry Pi. Um, so if you're on an x86, uh, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at how easy this is to install. Uh, here we are over on hub.docker.com. And this is the, the composer file example that they've given here. And this is a version 3.1, though I'm not entirely sure why, to be completely honest. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually taken this and modified it uh, a bit um, to uh, be a version 2. I also mapped all of these uh, these drives. Instead of having volumes down here for config uploads and modules, uh, I've actually just got uh, everything stored here. Of course, you can change where you'd like all that stuff to be stored uh, to fit your configuration just by modifying these three volumes. But before we go any further, taking a look at this stack, there's something we want to do first, and that's start setting up our uh, subdomain for our uh, for a public instance. So what we're going to do is jump over here. I'm on Cloudflare, um, and here we are. We're on my domain here, the domain we're going to use. I've blurred out my IP address there, uh, but what I'm going to do is click Add a Record. I'm going to change that to a CNAME record, and I'm going to type in social, and I'm going to type in at. Um, so then we'll have social dot db tech dot click just like it shows right here and i'm going to switch this from proxy to, to dns only and i'm going to click save so now we can uh, move on to the other part where we're actually going to install uh the the application actually it can be two containers one for the application one for the database um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here uh, this will all be i'll have all of these links and everything available in the description down below so what i'll do is just go over here and click on raw I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come over here uh, to Portainer. Now, I, I've got this screen open so you can see that I've got the Maria database right here, as well as HumHub 1.6.2 uh, downloaded uh, already to my system. So this will go much faster for me than it will for you. Also, currently, um, the reason I wanted to include this, uh, this hub.ocker.com, is because it's currently one version 1.6.2. Uh, there's some really good information in here about versioning. Uh, there's also some really good stuff in here uh, for mail configuration, uh, your PHP config for max file size uploads. Uh, there's a lot of really good information in here, um, but also uh, if for whatever reason you wanna come in and see uh, what the current version available is, uh, you can see the 1.6 series is stable. 1.7 is coming, but it's in testing phase right now. So if you wanted to put this in production, I would not use 1.7 as of the time of recording. Of course, if you're watching this later, uh, come check out this hub.docker.com page and figure out which current version is stable. And then of course, uh, make your changes uh, over in your stack. So we're gonna click add a stack and paste this in. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you change this uh, 1.6.2 and this 10.2 to whatever the current version is uh, that's compatible with uh, the stable version of HumHub. Just wanna get that clarified. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this just so we can give it a name. <clears throat> uh, so basically version two, we're running the service HumHub. We're gonna use this M Readman uh, HumHub 162. The, we're gonna link the database, which we can see down here. Uh, we're gonna put this, this was originally on 8080. I changed it to 8484 because we've already got stuff running on 8080. Again, I mapped the three volumes for the config uploaded modules. Uh, of course, you can again map these wherever you need them for your system. And then below that, we've got the HumHub username and database or username and password. I, I, of course, I highly recommend that for a production server, uh, you modify this username and password. Of course, whatever you make it here, uh, make sure that you make it here as well uh, for the username and password in the database. Those have to align in order for everything to work properly. So once we've got all of this set up and ready, and of course you could, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you could come down here and add uh, additional um, environmental variables uh, for different things uh, to uh, to expand on that 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 stack or that that Docker Compose for more configuration. There's a lot of stuff in here. We're just going with a base configuration for now. So once we've got all of that, what we're gonna do is scroll down and click on uh, deploy the stack. And again, I've already downloaded all of the images for this, so that'll go really, really quick. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down. Right here is HumHub, and we can see that our uh, application and our database are both running. Uh, so what I wanna do is just make sure that this is doing 
uh, what it needs to do. It's gonna go through a bit of a setup here, and then once it's ready, we'll go over and take a quick look. So let's back up, let's actually just click this and see what happens. All right, so uh, this is good. This is our install uh, script page. Uh, so this is where we're going to stop sort of, because uh, right now we're on our local uh, IP address and that's not what we want at all. What we want to do is actually come over here to Nginx Proxy Manager uh, and add a proxy host. Uh, I'm gonna, again, this was social.dbtech.click, like so. And I'm gonna type in the IP address of my server. Uh, the, that's my internal IP address. And of course I put that on port 8484. Uh, we're gonna block common exploits then we're gonna go over to SSL. Uh, we're going to request a new SSL and we're gonna force uh, those two and click agree and then click save. Okay, so here we are. We've got social.dbtech.click uh, and it's got a let's encrypt uh, SSL. So let's just go ahead and click that. And this brings us right to where we wanna be. So this is good information. This means we're ready to go. Now the next thing we wanna do is come back over here to, uh, to Cloudflare. We wanna switch this to, uh, to proxied here. So we'll go ahead and click on save. And then we can come back over to this install script and click next. Uh, all of this should be good to go. Now, if you wanted to, you could probably go in and install Image Magic and Graphics Magic uh, via the terminal uh, specifically for this container. We're not gonna cover that. Again, this is a very basic install that we're covering today. But those are those are optional anyway, uh, so not a big deal. Uh, it also says the memory limit is 64. Oh, that it needs to be at least 64 gigs or 64 megs, and our current limit is one gig, so that should be just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and click on next. The host name here uh, for the database, what we wanna do is come back over here. We're gonna look at this stack again. The, the host name is this right here, this DB. Uh, and we've also linked it up here. So that's what we're gonna make the host name. I'm gonna close that and come over to here. We're gonna call that DB. The username is hum hub. Of course, uh, you, you probably should have changed all of this information for the name of the database, the username and the password. I didn't, again, stock installation here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. I'm gonna close this. So it's initializing the database. Uh, so basically it's writing all of the initial tables and structure and all of the stuff that it's gonna need in order to, uh, to add users and that sort of thing here. So uh, once it's done initializing the database, uh, we can give it a name. I'm gonna call this uh, DB Tech Social and we'll click next. <clears throat> and here it's asking, how are you going to use this? Uh, is it gonna be a, a social internet for your company? Is it for your for your school or university? Is it for a club, a community? Or you, do you wanna set everything up manually? I'm gonna set this up as a community um, because if I were to deploy this, it would be to get all of my, my viewers, my supporters, all that kind of thing uh, in one central location and interacting with each other there. So I'm gonna set this up for community. I'm gonna click next. <clears throat> so uh, now we've got some options on how we wanna handle unregistered users. So are we going to allow users to register? Yes or no. Um, newly registered users have to be activated by an admin first. If you wanted to have a very, uh, very uh, controlled environment, uh, you would wanna turn that on, I think. Um, <clears throat> allow access for non-registered users to access public content, so guest access. Um, I'm gonna turn that off. Um, and registered members can invite new members uh, via email. You can turn that on or off. And you can have uh, friendships between members. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And then and here we've got some different modules that are available for birthdays, polls, mail. Uh, so like private messaging between members um, and then most active users, if you wanted to have that. I don't really like to have that. I feel like it kind of puts pressure on people to post things unnecessarily uh, if they wanna get into that most active users and then you end up with a, a website full of garbage. So I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna click next. So it's gonna download and install those modules. So now we're gonna create an admin account. Uh, I'm gonna call this DB Tech Admin. I'm gonna put in that, and I'm gonna put in a password. And my name. And I'll click Create an Admin Account. 
So here I actually, uh, for your first install, I actually recommend uh, setting up example content uh, just so you can see what things are going to look like. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna say next. So it's gonna throw some, just some dummy content in there so you can get an idea of what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and sign in. So if you're uh, already a member, you can sign in here. I'm gonna say DB Tech, oops, admin. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and click on sign in. And here we are, we're logged in, we've got our SSL working. Uh, we've, excuse me, we've already got some notifications up here. Of course, these are dummy notifications, so you know what to expect there. Now, what you'll wanna do first off, I think, is go into administration, go to settings, um, and then come over here to advanced, go to email, and set up your email. Uh, don't use a, the PHP uh, mail transport type here. I recommend using SMTP. Sign up for, for just a, a Gmail account uh, for your system, uh, just so you can have um, an actual email processor facilitate all of your mail stuff. Uh, if you try to do it through a PHP script, uh, like it was set up to, or, or file, you, you hear it says using for tester development, even PHP will often get uh, thrown into uh, spam or, or it won't go through at all, uh, depending on your server. So I recommend using SMTP. So you put in, you know, like smtp.gmail.com. Uh, you'd put in your email, or your, 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 this new email account that you set up, you put in the username and password for that. Uh, you do uh, either 465 or 587, depending on whether or not you want to use SSL or TLS. Um, and then it'll automatically send an email uh, just to verify that everything's working. Uh, but that's the first thing I really recommend doing uh, is setting up your email so that when you start, uh, when people start registering, uh, they will get the emails they need in order to actually sign up uh, and make that sign up a successful process. Uh, you can also go in, uh, set up proxies if you wanted to. Over here on the statistics page, you could put in uh, like, uh, Google Analytics or uh, whatever kind of analytics you wanted to put in there, you could put that right there. Uh, OEmbed, it's already got uh, OEmbed available for these services. Uh, there are logs. Uh, how long do you want to keep? Currently, there are no logs. Uh, files, uh, you can change uh, file upload sizes, uh, dimensions of uh, uh, preview images, things like that. Caching, uh, how do you want to handle caching? You can do that as well. Uh, so I definitely recommend digging through here and setting this up for your uh, specific needs, but I really did want to focus on uh, getting email set up for your uh, Hum Hub instance to make sure that registration goes the way you want it to. So I think that pretty much covers uh, everything I wanted to talk about in Hum Hub. It's super easy to set up. It's very user friendly. Uh, lots of cool stuff going on in here. So definitely check this out, set it up. You can even set it up locally just to test if you want to do that. Um, but definitely kind of a cool uh, social media uh, thing that you can host in Docker uh, with just a couple minutes of your time. So um, again, all of this will be available in the description down below. Uh, while you're down there, there are some other links where you could support the channel if you wanted to become a channel member or you wanted to become a patron. Those are both options. There's also coffee that's just a one-time tip jar. Uh, so all of that will be available down below this video as well. Uh, I wanna give a big shout out to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you guys. You guys are amazing. But I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.